Hello guys from Plant Reviews. Today I will talk about uh, gladioli and uh, well as you can see uh, not only humans like gladioli but also bumblebees that uh, uh, in my garden in my allotment uh, just uh, visit gladioli flowers all the time. Uh, they are probably I would say the insects that uh, are able to pollinate most of my gladioli flowers and uh, anyway Let's start with the introduction about this beautiful species. Uh, Gladioli uh, are, uh, is a genus uh, in the family Aridase, in the subfamily Crocoidae and the, the tribe Gladiole indeed. Uh, the term Gladiolus means a small sword uh, due basically to uh, the uh, shape of the leaves that as you can see resemble very much uh, swords and uh, also uh, uh, there's, uh, it is uh, um, known that uh, during the uh, gladiator uh, matches if the gladiator survived they were showered in gladioli uh, so also this might be uh, the reason of the um, term gladiolus uh, in um, referred to this plant and um, there is also a dutch saying uh, translated for death or gladioli that probably refers to uh, the uh, gladiator story uh, uh, the plants are perennial uh, cormus plants and uh, they are also sometimes called uh, by the vernacular name of sword lily however the most common name for these plants uh, is still uh, the uh, latin name gladiolus or in the plural gladioli uh, the species are uh, is a genus with uh, many species uh, more than 200 about 150 and uh, it is distributed in europe asia south africa and tropical africa uh, with the uh, center of biodiversity in the cape floristic region in uh, south africa uh, where uh, a lot of uh, endemic plants uh, are from including many uh, plants that are extremely popular in uh, um, in cultivation, uh, for example, uh, crocosmias and uh, um, many proteas as well, and uh, freesias and many other uh, species. Uh, gladioli uh, grow from rounded corms that kind of resemble a huge crocus corm and uh, you can buy them uh, in the season of the spring uh, bulb planting season so February to May and it will be planted about 10-15 uh, centimeters deep underground either in the garden or as I am doing in pots um, in well uh, drained soil and ideally in full sun to ensure that the beautiful flowers are produced in uh, huge spikes. Uh, the plants uh, are uh, usually unbranched so you can see from the main uh, corm uh, there is a very erect and a very vertical plant coming with one to nine uh, leaves again usually sword shaped and uh, usually one single uh, flower stem uh, bearing uh, one to nine uh, flowers in most of the wild species but uh, obviously in the garden hybrids uh, the, uh, they have been selected many more uh, they've been selected for uh, being more floral so uh, usually can produce uh, uh, at least 10-15 flowers and up to 30. Uh, the height varies across the species and the hybrids. They can be as small as about 10-15 centimeters or growing up to 120 centimeters in most uh, in some of uh, the most popular uh, cultivars. Uh, the um, Flowers are usually quite large and the petals and the sepals resemble very much each other and they are called petals indeed. Usually the uh, bigger one is the uh, top tepal in uh, most species. However in hybrids uh, this uh, can vary indeed for example in these parrot gladioli uh, the uh, biggest uh, tepals are actually the two horizontal and the um, lower one. Uh, in this one instead the uh, tepals are pretty much the same uh, the same height while in this one uh, again the uh, petals uh, the tepals uh, sorry uh, they have also pretty much the same uh, size 
the uh, the majority of the uh, species uh, come uh, as I said from South Africa where there are some uh, species also native to uh, Europe like Gladiolus Byzantinus and Gladiolus Italicus uh, the flower is uh, usually uh, funnel shaped as you can see in this flower I am uh, focusing uh, sideways and it opens up so as a, a funnel with basically um, uh, in the tubular part of the flower uh, originates the uh, anther and the uh, uh, and the stigma uh, you can see probably better in the sun in this flower indeed uh, the um, uh, pollination of these flowers uh, vary uh, usually is done by uh, bees in most of the species uh, again you just saw a bumblebee and there's another bumblebees bumblebee visiting uh, these flowers however also sunbirds have been uh, seen pollinating gladioli as well as butterfly and moths uh, in particular uh, South African species uh, this South African species have a wide variety of pollinators and uh, there's also they also evolved uh, some um, specific pollinators, uh, in particular with butterflies and uh, moths. Uh, the flowers are, some species have fragrant flowers, but most of the garden hybrids don't because uh, uh, they've been selected for uh, decades and uh, the main the main uh, interest for the hybridizers has been actually selecting for colors and flower sides rather than fragrance and this is a um, kind of a habit that has been uh, has been quite common in many other flowers roses for example uh, that have been selected first for color and uh, number of petals and the size of the flowers and just as secondarily for the uh, fragrance this is because humans as you know are some of the most visual mammals of all and uh, obviously fragrance while it is important is of secondary importance usually in humans um, the plants are, uh, that have been uh, selected uh, for hybridization have been selected just for a few, uh, from a few species. Uh, I've read between five and eight, however it seems that a South African species, Gladiolus galeniae, uh, Dalenii, sorry, has been the most used in hybridization. Uh, after pollination, the plants produce a trilobed capsule and uh, produces seeds. Uh, seeds can be used for propagation of gladioli, however, uh, they need uh, several years to flower, uh, but also they can be propagated by uh, offsets. Some gladioli, uh, some gladioli produce uh, many uh, cormlets from the basic corms, and these can be used to, pro to propagate gladioli in a much faster way. Uh, the um, most common selections in the gardens are uh, usually hybrids uh, called uh, Grandiflorus, Primulinus and Nanus. They differ basically in flower uh, size and height. The Nanus selection are plants that uh, can be up to 50 cm tall, while the Primulinus uh, cultivars are usually between 60 and 9 centimeters tall and the flowers in these varieties is usually up to 7 centimeters in diameter. Uh, also these are usually very cold hardy. Uh, I do not need staking most of the times because they are quite uh, small. Uh, they uh, are um, very cold hardy. I've read uh, up down to minus 26 degrees i'm not too sure because i luckily i don't live in a country that is that cold in winter however definitely uh, they are hardy uh, throughout uk the nanus and uh, the um, primolinus uh, about the uh, grandiflorus varieties these are uh, much uh, taller varieties they are between 90 and 120 centimeters tall and uh, they have flowers that can be up to uh, 15 centimeters, usually 10-15 centimeters uh, in diameter, 
and uh, they can grow up to 30 flowers per stem and usually they do need staking because obviously of the huge uh, height of the uh, plant in comparison to the corm and as you can see uh, this plant is growing a little bit uh, diagonally because I didn't stake it. I have to say that in pots uh, most gladioli uh, do not need staking because uh, the roots anchor with each other so they can grow a bit diagonally as you can see but rarely they basically tend to uh, fall over like for example in the gardens where there are more space and sometimes the um, uh, the roots aren't able to anchor deeply uh, or firmly to the uh, to the soil um, here you can see a butterfly gladiolus that is of the primulinus variety while the other two are glandiforous and are much taller uh, the colors of gladioli vary incredibly uh, in uh, the species as well as uh, in the hybrids. Uh, me in particular I like a very strong, very vivid color as you can see and I'll tell you more about uh, uh, in a couple of minutes about the varieties uh, in flower so far. Uh, Grandiflorus uh, um, hybrids, uh, even if they are bigger, unfortunately they tend to be a little bit more cold sensitive. Uh, they are hardy uh, up to zone uh, 7, I live in zone 8 and I have to say that I leave them outdoors all year round and I never had any uh, problems. Obviously if you live in a very cold area it's uh, recommended to lift the bulbs in autumn and plus to place them in a frost free place and then plant them again in spring at about 10 and 15 centimeters deep and again as I said well-drained soil and full sun. Uh, the um, gladioli uh, ideally need to be to be divided every few years to avoid the overcrowding of the corms. And let's talk about the hybrids I have here. So we'll start this with this one that is the gladiolus butterfly cell is a very uh, a very nice small gladiolus i believe this is a primulinus i wouldn't say that it's, it's a nanus because it's not that small and uh, the flower is about uh, uh, five centimeters, no, sorry, yeah, about six, six centimeters in diameter. Uh, very, very uh, vivid color, you can see, is a bright yellow with a, a beautiful flush of uh, bright red on the throat, on the uh, three lower tepals. Very, very nice, and it is. Uh, this one is producing one, two, three, four, five open flowers and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buds, so about 15. Uh, this one uh, is a very beautiful um, gladiolus that is, uh, a, one second, I need to take the uh, tag and this is the no, this is the Galtonia regalis. You can actually see Galtonia regalis here. It's, I planted the Galtonia regalis in between the gladiolus and it's hopefully uh, doing a flower spike and hope, hopefully I will tell you more about the Galtonia in the next few weeks. And let's see if I have the tag of the gladiolus. Yes, it's here and... Okay, that's the gladioli, Gladiolus colander frizzle. Uh, you can see that uh, this uh, Gladiolus is uh, a little bit frilled and uh, it is a very very bright pink, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it is a stunning Gladiolus. I'm sorry today is a bit cloudy, but uh, you've seen uh, in the start of the video how beautiful this plant is in full sun. And I have here another uh, kind of parrot gladiolus called gladiolus sorry oh yes the sozji so this is gladiolus sozji sorry for the pronunciation well you can see how it is written and this one it is a, a particularly uh, fine variety. You can, you can see how frilled are the tepals much more than the colander and the color is also extremely gorgeous. It's like a shell pink 
in most of the flower with the creamy um, with some cream flushes on the tree, uh, lower uh, tepals, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, these uh, plants, uh, the colander, uh, the colander frizzel and the sodshi are about a meter tall and are absolutely uh, beautiful flowers. In particular, the uh, colander frizzel is about, uh, I would say, 10 centimeters in diameter. This one is about uh, 12 centimeters in diameter with a roughly triangular um, shape. Gladiolites are uh, one, some of the most popular uh, flowers obviously in the garden and they are uh, very used to give uh, some vertical uh, interesting point, uh, like some vert vertical uh, interest to the garden and uh, um, ideally should be accompanied by uh, perennials uh, because gladioli unfortunately uh, blooming is about I would say a couple of weeks at the most and uh, definitely perennials will help to keep uh, the interest color interest in the garden for a longer time um, because obviously usually flowers in perennials last uh, blooming time in perennials must last much longer hope you enjoyed the video if you'd like to uh, support my garden channel would be great if you could please subscribe if you didn't like the video obviously any comment down below is more than welcome uh, if you can give me some tips to how um, improve my videos and uh, hopefully i will see you next time thanks for watching bye